You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for joining us as always. I'm grateful to be here with you and grateful that you're listening to our grandiose opinions. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. And yes, always happy to be hanging out here with you for just a spot of time. And I'm excited about this question, not necessarily because of the question, although it is sort of a unique question, but because we're uh, finally getting this gentleman on the show. And I really, really appreciate your persistence in asking questions. It has not gone unnoticed. That is not the only reason we're answering the question. It's a good question. But uh, um, take Arenza's um, lead and uh, don't give up and forgive us if we've not gotten one of your questions on. That doesn't mean we're singling you out. Just we haven't gotten to it. So anyways, long-winded, my bad, carry on. He's going to think that we don't like Australia for some purpose. Oh, I, are you kidding me? I mean, I've never been, but I really want to. Hey, I mean, every day I ask myself if I'm turning into Crocodile Dundee because I'm out in the bush. <laughs> I love those hats. And I always wear fishing shirts. <laughs> Yikes. And the guy who played Crocodile Dundee, his name was Paul Hogan. So, you know, it's just another Paul oh, out there. That's right. <laughs> uh, anyway, welcome. Uh, excited today. Uh, we are talking about mapping at an altitude with a camera and a rig. Uh, I don't think many people are using. So really excited to go over this. I think it's going to be a good one today. Uh, at least very specific, very short, and uh, very helpful. But brevity is important. So let's get started. Oh. Took me for a loop. All right, today's show is sponsored by oh, the Bald Headed Bureau. Do you know who that is? It's this guy sitting next to me and the other guy named Tim. They are the Bald Headed Bureau, that's what I call them. But without them, I wouldn't be here where I am today. So thank you very much to both of you. Thanks for sponsoring Paul. Right on. <laughs> G'day, Paul and Rob. Renza from Australia, long time listener multiple time question asker zero times featured Paul I've got a question for you I'm looking to plan a mapping mission uh, using an M600 at around 1500 feet AGL we commonly fly at that altitude and higher using fixed wing UAVs and never using a multi-rotor system I can get the approvals I uh, know my climb rate probably climb in about a minute and a half Two minutes and descend. Take me another two minutes, so let's say four minutes. Looking to put a 150 megapixel camera phase one on there. Um, just wondering if you know any softwares that will let me plan and fly mission at that altitude and everything that I need to know from a DJI standpoint uh, that I can't unlock at that height. Appreciate your input. Appreciate what you guys do. Look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Renza. And again, thank you for your persistence. Um, Pretty solid question and some high-level equipment he's using there, huh? Yes. And before I get started, Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, you know, he's not the first person that I've heard of people choosing to use large multi-rotors, especially the M600, um, instead of fixed-wing aircraft simply because of vertical takeoff and landing in addition to protecting the payload with a lot of these fixed wing aircraft other than the Wingtra, which is probably the most badass drone I've ever seen. And uh, Wingtra, we love Jack. He's a really cool guy. Really enjoy mapping with him and he's a lot of fun to be around. So thanks for developing an awesome culture at Wingtra. Um, but I've been hearing a lot of people who are going to multi-rotors to do these larger mapping missions. And for him, it's very simple and easy because in order to have a fixed wing that could carry that level of weight as far as camera payload is concerned, I mean, you're now talking about, you know, Jado style fixed wing or two blanche style fixed wing. And a lot of people don't have the resources uh, or infrastructure to support those types of, uh, of equipment. Mm -hmm. They also probably don't have a few million dollars. So. Um, wow. It would be hard. With the M600, why is it valuable as a multi-rotor for mapping large areas like a fixed wing? Number one, you've got two different sizes of batteries, which uh, can allow for two different, uh, well, 
that can allow for different uh, flight times with different payloads in different situations. But also the M600 is controllable through, I think it's the Go app, DJI Go, not Go 4. Pretty sure it's Go, but it can also be controlled through Ground Station Pro, which makes it so valuable over other large mapping platforms because you can set up autonomous missions mm. on the M600. And with fixed wings, most fixed wings uh, utilize, um, oh, what is that? Is it Mavlink? Um, trying to remember the name of the software, uh, the mapping planning software. It's super old open source. The mm. Most of them use one or two versions of that and then rebrand it. But long and the short of it is M600 is the choice because you can remotely control the camera and you can do autonomous missions rather easily without buying additional ancillary equipment. Okay. So. Now, key caveat, as I've learned with the M600, you cannot just buy an M600 in the United States. In Australia, it's very different. That's also important for our listener. In Australia, the SRW60G, the fact that I can remember these product numbers is ridiculous. Sickening, but go ahead. Um, SRW60G, which is the TX transmitter and receiver for the M600, is a separate part on the M600 Pro when you buy it in the United States. In other countries like Australia, they don't have the same FCC limitations that we do. And I'm not even sure if they use the SRW60G. I'm pretty sure that was made specifically just for America. Anyway, M600 Pro comes with video VTX when you buy it in other countries, but not in the United States. Huh. Had to remember that. Interesting. <laughs> also, uh, on the M600, can you use Ground Station Pro to fly at 1,500 feet if you have the right authorizations? Since he has the right authorizations, I'm happy to give the answer, and the answer is yes. In Ground Station Pro, when planning a mission, right below your ground sampling distance, there is altitude at which you're flying, and it's a big slider, and you can slide it. To, where did we get it to? It was like sixteen or 1,700 feet? It was definitely over 1,500 feet. I don't know where we stopped. Yeah, but, but you can go pretty high. Now, key caveat. In America, most of the DJI M600s are set at a flight limit of, I think it's, uh, I want to say it's 500 feet. I can't remember the actual parameter that is set up, but you have to go into the SDK and change that to say, like, again, if you have the authorizations, you can change that parameter. It's just, if you remember my hack video, and I always use the hack instead of going the regular SDK route because, again, I have everything without being told what I can and can't do. So I use this for every drone. <laughs> so anyway, also remember that when you plug in the M600, there are two ports. There's the port on the light and uh, I forget where the other flight controller port is. And I do not remember the specific port that you have to use to do the upgrade. And I, I remember that it was special because I remember that I got frustrated that my mm. computer wasn't recognizing the M600. Until you so, tried the other one? Yes. Mm. And also you need to make sure the cable you're using is MFI certified. Um, otherwise, there won't be data that transmits between your computer and the drone. Uh, I, I had... That problem, I went through like nine cables before the computer finally read the thing. Yeah. Wow. And it can be really frustrating because you think your drone is broken. But anyway, so change that parameter in SDK. Just download version 1.2 of Assistant, DJI Assistant. If you're using a Mac, command option I, and then essentially uh, you go into the F local file settings. In there, you change, um, uh, what is the parameter called? Um, it's like uh, demo mode or data mode or something. It's in my hacks video. Go watch it. You change the zero to a one, the true to a false, and then you press X. Then what you do is you click the M600 aircraft. Bottom left corner, you see all the parameters and a bunch of settings you've probably never seen before. You go into parameters, and then you search underscore max underscore alt, A-L-T, and you'll see that parameter come up, and you can change it. Or you can just be like most consumers and just buy No Limits drones and unlock the whole thing and do whatever you want. And you don't have to know all this nuanced information. They have like a, a cool little GUI that you can go in there and be like, Remove, 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 remove. Like, and it just does it. Nice. So, and because... Are, the, is that expensive? That's uh, $49 per drone. Oh. Probably well, worth the time. You know what's pathetic? Is that we have to pay $49 to have the God-given rights that our American government gave us. The Supreme Court said when you buy something, 
software or firmware cannot take away or limit any usage of whatever the product is being sold. That was a Supreme Court case from last year. Hmm. That still happens all the time. I know. But anyways, it's good to know that's out there. I mean, you got to give them, they're, they're solving a problem, right, for people. Yeah, they are. They are. And I mean, you know what? Uh, I, Vic and I have gone back and forth on this. He's like, we don't want to tell everyone to unlock their drones. I'm like, sure we do. We're Americans. When we buy something, we own it. Like, no, I don't want to empower the irresponsible pilots, but I also want to do the right thing for American citizens. So, um, yeah, I think the reality is the, the vast majority of people that are listening that would get this information are going to do things the right way. So true. I'm sure that's you. True. Anyway, thanks again for joining us. Hopefully you answer that question. Uh, Ground Station Pro will allow you to map at 1,500 feet. You need the SRW-60G if you are in America. And depending on which country you're in, you might also need the Air Commander 2. That system comes from a company out of New Zealand. Thank you to our good friend Kenji Sukahara for teaching us about that for our particular M600. Thank you very much. You may or may not need that part to automatically trigger your phase one camera. Make sure you check out which Air Commander to buy because there are different air commander setups depending on the camera that you wish to trigger. So that being said, what are the keys to mapping? Autonomous flight mode, camera tilt certain way, global shutter, fixed focal length, autonomous shooting to get that right overlap. And in order to do that, you need a camera that can be controlled from the ground through an app triggered automatically during an autonomous flight mission while in the air. Um, and um, that's why I think he's going M600. Also, M600 offers redundancy that fixed wing mm. Mm, doesn't really offer. So sure. that being said, um, you know, he mentioned the climb rate. Uh, my friend, you really, 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 really have to be careful on flying that payload at that altitude on those batteries. Um, I don't know if you've watched our battery test. It's rule number three of our rules of takeoff. Uh, it's found in the Don't Crash course. It's found in a couple of our classes, and it's it's uh, harped on at Flight Mastery. That rule is going to be so important for you. Um, so make sure you know how to do a battery test. Make sure you know voltage calculations because, I, you know, in your question, you mentioned your climb rate and whatnot, and that's great. But a lot of people don't understand the exponential power that you're ut utilizing in a climb and how that's different from... Uh, you know, when you're descending or even when you're hovering or even when you're moving laterally and not um, uh, not uh, climbing or descending. So please keep that in mind because Ground Station Pro might tell you it's a 20 minute flight, but depending on density altitude, depending on your payload, other uh, environmental factors, that time could go in half easily, uh, even up to 75%. So just please be careful when you do these missions that you're factoring in for those calculations. This goes into, again, why you need such nuanced standard operating procedures for your drone program. But we've got a great program to solve that problem coming up soon. Excited to launch it. Uh, it's like the only thing we're working on right now. So. A anyway. lot of resources going into that, but it's all going to be worth it. It really is. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You.